Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Sinsen Schwenk and this is another video from the tutorial series which I recently did for Maxon University. And in this video we'll have a look on how to create a cloth material with the help of Substance and render it in Redshift. And I have my file from the last tutorial already open and today I want to create a cloth material with you. So therefore I will directly go into Substance and if you don't know Substance, it's a really nice program create to create your own materials and textures. But they also have like a source where you can download materials which are already like finished and ready done. And you don't have to be a master in designer or painter. So I'll just quickly show you how that works. Let's say, and let's just click download and I need the SBSAR file. Nice, so the download is done and I'll directly go into my download folder and you can see that's the file. And I have this program which is called Substance Player and this is a free version from Substance where you can open these types of materials and you can like customize them a little bit and then you can export your maps which are needed and that's really nice. So I will open the one and you can already see that a preview of this material is shown into this um, kind of render view which is really nice. Then we need to adjust some things. Overall I'm mostly working 4k so our currently output size is 512 we need to switch that to 4K, which is 4096. And now you can play around with these values. Like sometimes there is more to play around, sometimes there's less. For example, let's see, we can increase the color variation in there, or we can increase the color, color variation chroma or decrease it. And there are some subtle changes in there, but overall I anyway think this is pretty nice. We could, of course, change the color in Redshift, but I will directly do it in here, because my shot should be nice and yellow. And I will take, yep, this color, which is pretty nice. And when you're happy with your settings, you just have to click here, export as bitmap. And now you can choose which maps you want to export. And I'm not needing all of them, I just need the base color, the normal, I don't need specular glossiness, I need the roughness, I don't need metallic, I don't need specular and I will take the height and I don't need AO in here as well. Then my format, I will just work with the JPEG format here and then you need to choose your path where to save that and then you have adjust everything and just need to click export and Substance Player is exporting everything for you, which is nice. So we are already done here and I can close this program again and switch back to my cinema. Nice. Then we, or I want to switch into another layout because we want to work with Redshift. So going back into my Redshift layout and I'm pressing play on the IPR to see what we got there. So overall, I don't need to do much onto this view right now. So I can scale that down and also this a little bit more, trying to get a bit of room in here on my, sc on my screen. Then I would say, let's work on all of the objects at the same time. and. Therefore, I will just duplicate the material from the last video which we did there and I'll call it Colossus. And I did duplicate that because I still want to maintain the color user data in there. So I'm overriding this guy. Then you have to go into the folder where you saved all your maps. And I can just select them all and drag and drop them into your shader graph. That is nice. So I want to first of all start with the diffuse. I'll move these other maps for now out of sight, so here is the base color. And I can, for example, now connect the base color to my output, and you can see now that all of the materials have this base color now. Nice. Then let's directly start with a color layer. So in the color layer, I want my base color to be my color user data. And to see directly what I'm doing, I'm connecting the color layer to my output as well. So then I will select my diffuse material and put it into the layer one color. Now I have to select my color layer and I do only have to adjust the mode how these two layers are blend together. So the blending mode now is normal, but I want to add it or I want to multiply it depending on your style or look. I would say I want a brighter world, so I will add it and I'm not going with 100%, I'll just say 0.8. And then what we need to do is we just have to connect our color layer to the diffuse color and again connect the material to the output. And now we're starting to see something. Then I would say I want to focus onto this guy because my screen is 
quite small right now. I will create a second camera. And the second camera, I don't want to have any bokeh. So I'm turning that off. And with the second camera, I will go super close to this object. So I see better what I'm doing here. And what do we need next? The roughness. So before I connect the roughness to my roughness channel from the material, I also want to integrate a ramp material or like a ramp node. And I will connect my roughness input here and I'll connect the ramp to my base property reflection. And then you need to go to reflection roughness. And the cool thing about this ramp, I can now directly adjust the roughness of my material. For example, if this is too um, shiny for me, I can just tone down the black value so it will be more matte. Or the other way, if I want it to be more glossy, I just have to change the value of the white and have to put it a bit more gray. So overall, it is more glossy. That is also really nice to work like that. So I have my mouse over the shader graph and again I'm pressing Shift C and I'm typing in the bump and we can already see that two materials appear, the bump map and the bump blender and we will definitely need both of them. So I'll first of all choose the bump blender and then I'll choose the bump map. And then we need to select our normal map. And then we need to go to general image and one important thing we need to enable the gamma override. Otherwise the gamma level is not correct and the normal map won't be doing its job. So then we need to connect the normal map to the bump input. And then in the input map type, we need to change it from height field to tangent space normal. Cool. Then we just need to connect our bump map to the overall bump input. And now you can see a lot of changed in here, which is really great. Well, first of all, I can already say that the scale of the material is too big. It feels like we are too close to this woven thing and I wanted to feel a little more smaller. So therefore I will select all of my maps, the four we placed into this material and I'll change the scale from one to two. So everything will get a bit uh, smaller. And this was perhaps even a bit too much. So I'll go a value in between from 1.5. And I think this is great. Let's continue with the bump blender. And why I created this is because I want to blend my normal material with a maxon noise and therefore again i'm pressing shift c and i will get myself a maxon noise and for the maxon noise we also need a bump input and what i really love to do is to add like a very tiny amount of very small noise to break up the overall material because the cool thing is the maxon noise is procedural and you can go as close as you want and you won't see like texture breakups so that really helps also to get the material a bit more realistic. Therefore, again, I'll connect the maxon noise to the input. And in the input now, we have a height field, not a normal again. Then the next thing what we need to do, give us perhaps a little bit more room. It's so tiny here. We need to connect the base input, which is the normal. And then we need to connect layer one, bump input zero one. Then we need to connect the bump blender and we need to blend everything together. In the blend weight, we need to type one. And also I want to add them together. So I'll check the additive mode as well. Then we just need to select the bump blender and connect it to the previous bump input node from our main material. Nice. Then what also is really good to see what you're actually doing there. You have to connect the noise itself to the output and then we can change some values. So this noise is way too big. Therefore, I will shrink it down to 0 0.001. So now we have a really tiny, tiny noise. Let's see if we go very close and closer, you can see that it is there. And perhaps it is even a little bit too tiny. So I'll go to 0 0.2. And yeah, again, this really helps to break up everything. Then what I can tell you out of experience that the height scale of one is always way too much. Especially with these small things, I think a height input from 0, 0, 1 could be a good value. Well, let's, let's go a bit more strong, 0, 0, 5. Then we need to just connect the material to the output again and see how it changed. Yeah, I think we are really getting somewhere. Then what I want to perhaps emphasize a bit more is the reflectivity of this material. Perhaps you can drag down the black values a bit more to the right. So everything is a bit more reflective and you can see better highlights. And I think this already did the trick, which is great. Then as a last thing, we have to look out for displacement. And in the previous tutorial, 
I already created this tag. And then in the geometry, you just have to scale down here until we reach this field. And we now need to enable the displacement. Then perhaps would be a good time to check your tessellation. And the best trick to do that is to go back into your material and press Shift C again. And then I'm typing wireframe. Now we can select the wireframe and connect it to the output. And now you can see how the actual tessellation is working or what Redshift internally is calculating. And I think for displacement, we can definitely have more tessellation. So therefore I will change my style from the Redshift object tag and I want to brute force the subdivision. So I'll type in tree and the minimum edge length needs to be zero. So now we can see we have a lot of more subdivisions and perhaps this is even a bit too much. Let's try it with three. One important thing, you have to be a bit careful with these numbers. If they are too high, your system would get really, really slow. I'm now back in the shader graph, pressing shift C and I'm looking for a displacement. And then I just need to know to connect my displacement material with my displacement node and connect the displacement node not to the material itself, we just need to connect it to the output. So go to the output and then there is this displacement. Now we just need to connect back our main material to the output and see what's happening there. And perhaps you can go a bit closer with the camera to get a better representation of what the displacement is doing here. So I'm increasing the scale now to 2. You can already see the material is getting better. And perhaps even 3 is a value which works very well for us. And I think 3 is kind of nice. So now I'm switching back into my uh, main camera from the composition. And let's see how this looks. So I think this is quite nice so far. But the materials are perhaps too bright. And I think my blending mode doesn't fit so well in here. I want it to be a bit more subtle and softer. So therefore instead of the blending mode add, I'll go to soft light and you can see it looks a bit more realistic and a bit more nicer. And perhaps also I'll drop down the intensity of the mask, so I'll drop it down to 0.7. And yep, I think this definitely looks better now. And if I'm now looking at the small resolution of my screen, the, this part feels a bit too small. So perhaps I'm selecting all my materials and I'm increasing the scale a little bit, so I'm putting 1.4. So very important for the materials is that the materials itself are not too big or people are usually are making them too big because they think they can also see it in real life. But if you look around yourself and you try to see the pattern of, I don't know, your curtain, it's really hard to see it. So better keep it a bit smaller than too big. And if I'm now having a look at my whole composition, I think we can change the colors a little bit. And again, now comes the handy part about this workflow with the color user data. I just can click into the material, which for example is too white for me. I can click in there and let's say we make it a bit more grayer and a bit more yellow and it automatically updates and I think it fits better into the composition now. And also this guy for my taste is a little bit too dark. So let's make it a bit more brighter mm, and more saturated. Yeah, nice. It fits better in the world now. Then. Let's save at this point and continue in the next tutorial with another material. So thank you.